Hello everyone, this is KJ4YZI, you're watching Ham Radio Concepts, and on the desk today, the new Anytone AT D578UV3 Pro. The new Anytone tri-band digital and analog mobile radio, courtesy of Bridgecom Systems, who was kind enough to send me this radio so I can get it in my hands and play with it on a video and show you guys all about it. Bridgecom also says if you purchase this radio from them, you will get the Bridgecom University, which is a online courses that will teach you how to make code plugs, how to operate DMR, programming your radio, and more. So thank you, Bridgecom, who also in the past sent me the Anytone 878 UV handheld. And I have said several times, this radio, this Anytone, is by far the best handheld that I've ever had. The crispest, clearest audio, easiest to program, just an awesome radio. What makes that better? Put it in a mobile with high power, the same GPS, Bluetooth, and APRS functionality. Add 220 and you'll have an awesome radio for to replace any radio you have for analog and digital, including 220. And guys, this is FCC ID. This is an FCC Type 90 accepted radio. It does have part 15 acceptance for 220 megahertz. So you can take your communist China and your Chinese are ruining the ham radio comments, throw them right out the window because you can ask anybody. I guarantee this sounds better than almost all the Chinese radios you've ever heard. Anytone is doing a good job on this manufacturing this radio. It's solid. It sounds crystal clear. So let's give it a chance, huh? Because it is FCC approved. Let's check out the 578 UV3 mobile. Not an unboxing video by any means. I don't do that anymore. But I do want to mention that the, the manuals that come with this, guys, it's 2020, okay? Give it a chance. This is not the traditional Chinglish translation that used to be with the old Bofeng and other Chinese radios. This is legitimate warning that if I read this manual, I would be able to understand most of the functions on the radio. So yes, they have gotten a lot better. And you know, this combined with the Bridgecom University lessons on their website will really make you an expert at this radio, but you're not lost in the dark with the whole communist China can't translate. Guys, wake up a little bit. You know, because I know those comments are coming. Uh, a decent manual, yes. Nice looking radio here, solid. Got some weight to it, metal chassis. It's got the top firing speaker. The whole top is a heat sink with the fan that comes on when extended uh, transmit times generate heat in this radio. The, the face is not detachable. Now, uh, a couple people have mentioned that online. Wow, if this had a detachable face, that's it. That's the only thing it needs. Maybe in the future they'll do that because some people don't have the room to mount a radio like this, not too big. But I know that I have room to mount this in my vehicle uh, sideways against one of my seats in my truck. That would work for me. But some people have a little car and they don't have room. That's no problem though. You'll find a place to stick it under the seat or something. Um, we're going to get into this because there's a couple of connections uh, for programming, like the U micro USB on the head here, probably for the programming cable. Got your SO239 in the back. And there's an SMA over here, maybe for, I don't know, we're going to find out what that connection is. Comes with a mobile mounting bracket, which is always a plus because a lot of radio manufacturers these days make that an optional accessory. So it does come with a mobile mounting bracket. Of course, all the things you'd want, your mic hanger, your fuse, uh, your power cord, does come with a USB, micro USB, uh, for the Bluetooth functionality because here is your little Bluetooth PTT. So that's got a battery. You're going to charge that. And also uh, USB probably for uh, programming and your microphone. And over here, okay, so that's your external GPS. So the GPS is an SMA, an external antenna, that's going to go on the radio itself. That'll give you a better GPS signal for your DMR ID or location and your APRS functionality, which we're going to get into in a second video. So yes, this just did turn into an unboxing video. I don't do that much at all anymore, but I had to show you what this comes with when you're buying it, okay? Because it's... I want to make sure you understand, um, and me as well. So this microphone is different. Look at that. That, that looks like a nice microphone. It's got a, got a nice soft click to it, but different than any other man, uh, microphone. You know, a lot of times you'll see Chinese microphones that rip off the ICOM style and all this, and they all kind of look the same. That's a little different. you got your ABCD programmable keys. you got a, uh, so, uh, I guess, your main PTT and sub-PTT for A and B uh, VFOs. Pretty cool stuff. Channel up, channel down, looks like a nice microphone, plugs in with an RJ45 here. So uh, that's your microphone, because everybody always asks me, Eric, you never show us the stock mic with any radio anymore. Okay, there it is. It's got a nice uh, nice feel on the buttons. And it's got a nice feel in my hand, too. This, Yeah, this might end up going in my vehicle and replacing uh, one of my other radios because it's got APRS on it. So we'll get into that. 
another video. Okay, so first thing we see here, nice color display here, looks really comparable to the 878 display. I imagine a lot of the functionality is going to look the same. They probably even put the same screen in the front. So again, VFOA, VFOB, switch between the two on the microphone like this, okay? So you have VFOA and VFOB. Here's the kicker, guys, and I didn't mention this yet. This radio not only has cross-band functionality, but cross-mode functionality. That's right. You can go in on analog and VHF, and the radio will come out and transmit on DMR on UHF. A cross-mode radio. DMR to analog, DMR to DMR, analog to analog, analog to DMR. 220 to UHF, VHF to UHF. That is awesome. Now in the microphone, you could use, you know, control everything from the microphone like this menu and go up and down. So you have talk group messages. It looks pretty, really reminiscent of the 878, doesn't it? Roaming features, we're gonna get into all that stuff after. GPS, let's see if the GPS locked on. Let's see, we'll turn that on. And that's my external GPS I have plugged in right here. So that'll pretty much 3M on your vehicle or magnet or wherever. Uh, however that's going to attach, but I like the fact that it's got an external GPS. That thing should lock in moments. Um, so we're going to go back go down to uh, Bluetooth functionality. Again, Bluetooth, you can pair it with your PTT button so that you can use it uh, with a finger trigger. I'm imagining you can pair it with uh, an external audio source or headset so that you can use this thing while driving uh, with an earpiece in and Bluetooth, hands-free functionality. Really cool stuff. They're really thinking thinking about the uh, future, uh, having Bluetooth in it. So APRS functionalities, again, we're gonna make a whole separate video on this. Um, the same settings exist in the 878, but my big thing is um, I want traditional APRS in here. And I was going to, first I had, wherever it is, I had my uh, Yesu here, my FT2D in my, in my vehicle at five watts just to use traditional APRS. And then I, I had that VGC mobile, which is Bluetooth and also has uh, APRS, but it's not really working APRS at the moment. They got to fix that. And then this, I'll be able to monitor DMR or work DMR, use a hotspot, use my analog simplex that I always like being on, and then also have APRS running at the same time. I love APRS. Um, who's to know what comes out in the future model if they have more APRS functionality or what? Uh, so those are coming in a future video, but we can go down to settings. We can go to radio set, go to uh, channel name. We can name the radio right here. It is programmable right through the front. Uh, speaker mode, you have the mic speaker that comes out of this. You also have the radio speaker or you have both. So you can mount this thing if you really wanted to out of sight or under the radio or under the uh, car seat and have your audio coming out of here if you're not one of those channel jumpers. If you're somebody that's constantly got to see the screen, um, you still have the ability to have the speaker mic to operate as your speaker. Always a good thing so you don't have to listen or focus on the speaker here if it's behind your seat. Um, we'll go like the settings. Uh, let's see, channel set. So we can name the channel. Transit power, turbo, which would be full power, high, medium, and low. Uh, we also have uh, offset bandwidth. Everything can be set right here on the front to enter in a manual channel, okay? And the best part about this is I could take my code plug from my 878 handheld and dump it directly into this 578. So no, you don't have to have two different types of code plugs and build a whole new one. You got one for your 878? Dump it into the 578. This just keeps getting better and better. I think this will be in my vehicle. I was gonna give this radio away, guys. I thought, well, I'm not gonna really have a use for it. Well. I think I might eliminate one more radio in my vehicle and pop this in instead. And uh, that's going to be really cool. Uh, switch between A and B right here on the front of the mic here. Really cool stuff. Programmable buttons here, P1. So you could do uh, you know analog, digital, you could set that. You can set them for long press or short press uh, if you set it that way. And uh, dual, let's see, you get your volume over here. Volume over here. So dual volume controls for A and B VFO. Then you have your frequency or channel selector here, okay? And uh, speaker on the top, well, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go 14655 here, and I'm gonna turn this volume all the way up, and now I'm gonna get on my Anytone 878, and we're gonna transmit into it locally and see exactly how loud the speaker is. I can only imagine it's gonna be twice as loud as my 878 handheld here. 
KJ for, oh my gosh. <laughs> KJ4YZI testing. KJ4YZI. Oh my gosh. You got to you got to understand I want a loud speaker because I want to be able to hear this thing in the mobile and if it's not loud then that does me no good. It's also got weather alert on here. Another great thing for someone who's mobile and skyborne weather alarm, weather channels so that if there's a uh, EAS tone that's uh, from the emergency alert system for a weather event, it's going to uh, alert you on the radio. Repeater. Now this is the repeater function that will turn in the cross motor cross band functionality. Okay. Now when you do this, you can look in the manual or go through Bridgecom's uh, advice and you can set up to go analog to digital or VHF to UHF cross band and more. Okay. So that's really uh, a good thing. We're going to turn that off for now. That's your cross mode or cross band repeat. And then you'll set it up with the dual VFOs, uh, how you want it to work cross band. Um, so the GPS, I wonder is the GPS going to uh, automatically set the time? I'll have to figure that out. But it's going to get me into 220. Only five watts on 220, but that's okay. And I'm going to show you here in a second the antenna that they sent with it, that they pair uh, with this radio that is a tri-band antenna. It's going to make me want to try to get into a couple of the 220 megahertz repeaters that are around. 220 is a great band. It's quiet. It's not too busy. There is not a lot of people out there on 220, but comment if you prefer the 220 band and where the action is in your area. Now, Bridgecom sent this antenna. This is actually an, branded by Anytone, a tri-band antenna exclusively designed I get that reflection there, exclusively designed for this tri-band Anytone mobile. Now, Bridgecom sells this as an additional accessory, but they send it along with the radio probably because they want to know what I think about it. And I'm curious to know as well, and I'm going to tell you why. First, it's got a male UHF base on the bottom, so you're going to need to provide a suitable mount, whether it be a uh, mag mount or a door mount, a lip mount, or whatever. But what I want to know is how this works because the diameter of this antenna elements here are, is by far bigger than any antenna I've ever had. I've had a lot of comets and diamonds and MFJs. For some reason, that is a really big, solid piece of metal. I, I don't know how that, I mean, that could only be better, right? It's going to be more solid, maybe give me better gain. I'm not sure. But China decided, well, we're not going to use a little puny, tiny, you know, antenna element. So when you look at this, the video doesn't do it justice. When you look at this, that is one hefty antenna right there, I got to say. And uh, that's really what I'm going to have to use for now because I don't have a antenna that will do 220. So I'll let you know in the future videos when I get this mounted on the truck what this antenna does. Maybe I'll sweep it with the analyzer. We'll check it out and see what kind of gain I get for this. But so far, this is the only thing I have that would be tri-band to match this radio. So I'll give it a shot. Well, guys, just a lot of good highlights for this radio. I'll touch on them again. We have the addition of 220 megahertz in my mobile, making it a tri-band. We have the addition of cross-band and cross-moding. So my theory is when I'm out of sight doing some work and I got my 878 as a daily carry lately, I can go ahead and set this up in my vehicle to cross-band to a 220 megahertz repeater that may be a little far away, maybe cross-mode from analog to DMR, or even you know hit a SARNET repeater that may be 20 miles from me, but that's accessible with a 50-watt mobile. I could be in a building or a site or away from my vehicle with this transmitting to my vehicle, which will cross band to the SARNET repeater on UHF. There's so many possibilities. Uh, the addition of, uh, you know, APRS, Bluetooth, uh, an external GPS for a really good uh, GPS connectivity. I really think that this video, this radio is uh, uh, worth having. And I'm going to get a lot of stuff going on, so I'm going to do several other videos. I want to incorporate DMR programming again between these two. Why? Because there's a lot of people that are saying, Eric, you know, I just want to understand DMR. I'm going to try to get back into it again. I can do the same video for both units because they're both the same. They, they pretty much have the same programming, just a different software application. Um, I, I'm also going to get into setting up APRS and how I'm mounting it in my vehicle. We'll check that stuff out here in the near future. So I look forward to seeing Bridgecom at Hancation in Orlando and stop by my booth because they have generously donated an AT878 handheld package for my giveaway, one of my giveaway prizes at my booth in Orlando. Stop by, throw a raffle in, and uh, maybe you'll win that and get started in DMR as well. 7-3, everybody. More videos on the way. Check the links in the description. KJ4YZI.